Power breakfast. Yes Power or breakfast. no? Power breakfast. Yes. Yes. Do you do them often? Sure, me and my cat in my you kitchen, and your cat in with your kitchen. my power bar and my coffee. <laughs> Excellent. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So not with the outside world. Yeah, on occasion. What do you have for breakfast? Power bar. Okay. Um, coffee, and I I still have to have the little bit of orange juice. If I don't have the orange juice, yeah. I sort of feel like I missed something. I get it. And cat in the lap and computer at the ready. Generally at 4 a.m. I you know I read that about you. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere you get up super early. I get up super early because I find I do my best unguarded thinking. I wake up with about seven ideas. Yes. One of which might even be good. And I find I get up and if I can get it out, mm -hmm. you know, and it can lead our business in a new direction. But that if I'm up and out the door and having that power breakfast in Midtown, yes. I lose all that good thinking. I want to go back in time a little bit. Okay. What makes Sally Krawcheck, Sally Krawcheck? I love what I do. I've loved every bit of it. I, being CFO of City maybe wasn't my favorite, but I loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved running Smith Barney. I loved running Merrill. I loved being a research analyst. Mm -hmm. I love being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I loved getting fired mm. because I recognize these are first world opportunities. So what makes me me is hey, a little insecure, mm. right? A little insecure. Um, but a lot of joy about yeah. what I'm doing and a sense of humor. So I was the only person in the financial crisis who returned client money in the downturn. Yes. And I was fired for it. Yes. Um, and when that happens, you say, all right, you know, you reach a fundamental crossroads. Mm -hmm. Do I want to keep, is it important enough for me to go against my ethics to keep my job and get the money? Mm -hmm. And you go through experiences like that and you learn the mm -hmm. perspective. You learn what's important to you. Mm -hmm. And so for me, and particularly at this stage of my life with Elevest, mm -hmm. which is a digital investment platform for mm -hmm. women, it's really a lot about I've been given so much, now I really want to have an impact. Yeah. And that's what makes me go, is, is if I can have an impact on other women, right. which then has an impact on their families, right. which then has an impact on our economy and society, well, that is not a sucky way to spend the day. You seem to have a, well, you have a conscience and you, you've you stuck to it on many occasions. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Wall Street is, notorious for having a culture that isn't always as conscientious um, and yet you've been incredibly successful. Why do you think you were successful? I mean I definitely had my ups and downs, maybe some of the most visible ups and downs mm -hmm. of anyone mm -hmm. on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. I think I was successful on Wall Street uh, because I was smart enough I think you're being modest. Smart, smart but, but no, yes. but you have to be you have to be smart enough. You don't there's a view you have to be this smart. Yes. You have to be smart enough. enough. I worked like a fiend. Uh -huh. And so, you know, this whole work life balance mm. and but da, 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 I work like a fiend mm. because I love it. Mm. Um, I have two kids. I I was I said a mediocre mother the whole way. <laughs> but, <laughs> my mother actually always said that but she worked mediocre. Yeah. Mediocre. But I loved my job and I worked very hard yeah. and I was willing to take risks. Yeah. Uh, that others really weren't. Mm -hmm. I was told early in my career, don't stick your head up. Um, Wall Street is a place you can make hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars mm -hmm. by being mediocre. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take some risks and see how far I can go. So I was one of the first to have negative recommendations on stocks on Wall Street. It wasn't done. Wow. Uh, when I was director of research at Sanford Bernstein, I pulled us out of the conflicted investment banking business. It wasn't done. Mm -hmm. Uh, we gave up millions of dollars, but I ended up on the cover of Fortune magazine for it. Mm -hmm. um, I took a job at Smith Barney. I really had no business taking. It was 35,000 people. The only business I'd run before was 386. But I took a risk, and it worked. And now as an entrepreneur, I'm taking a risk. So I think it is certainly a risk tolerance. Yes. But I think underlying that risk tolerance is a recognition that you know what, if I fail, I can get up and start doing something else tomorrow. Right. You once said, if you haven't had a major fail in your career, <laughs> face plant level, then you weren't trying hard enough. <laughs> Have you ever had a face plant level oh, fail? Oh, absolutely. I, again, I didn't want to brag when I showed up because I didn't want to, you know, intimidate you and okay, everything. Okay. But I, I am the only woman on the planet who's been fired on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Ah, okay. Twice. 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 Business is changing. Mm and fast. Mm -hmm. If you are of the view, I'm not going to take a risk, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, I'm going to keep my head down, yeah. you're taking a bigger risk mm. than if you're trying to move forward. Mm -hmm. The best career advice I ever got was from my mother who 
incidentally is a, was a stay-at-home mom. Um, and I had just had my second child, a little girl. My mother came up to visit. I was a research analyst at Sanford Bernstein, and we sat outside a restaurant, and I started to cry. And I said, I've got a toddler, I've got a baby, I've got a job, I have a husband, I can't sleep, we're not sleeping, I'm so tired, I don't know if I can do this. Yep. And my mother turned to me and said in that way only mothers could, well, of course you can, you're just going to be tired for a while. <laughs> and I thought, oh, oh, right, okay, right, okay. Of, of course I can, I'm just going to be tired for a while. And on top of that advice, I've heard other women say over time in those early years, hold on. Yeah. If you, if you want to stay in business, hold on by your fingertips. You're going to be tired, but maybe you have to go part-time, maybe you go to a more flexible arrangement. But the cost of stepping out of the workforce and taking a career break is much more than women think. A math question for you. Mm -hmm. If you're a woman making $85,000 a year mm -hmm. and you decide to take a two-year career break, how much does that career break cost you? I guess it's more than 170. Yes, so you would typically say 170, um, and I would say 1.7 million dollars. And you wow. would say, wow. And I would say the reason for that is because if you take a career break, two year career break, we've done a lot of research on this, you typically take a double digit percent pay cut when you get back. Yep. For the rest of your life, you get raises off of that double digit pay cut. Yep. And by the way, you didn't invest in your 401k and you didn't contribute to Social Security. Mm -hmm. So these numbers add up. So I'm all for career breaks. What I'm against are career breaks that we think are cheap yes. when they're expensive. If you could change one thing about the way you financially plan for yourself, what would it be? Oh my gosh, that's an easy one. So um, I would not allow my first husband, mm -hmm. who is now my ex-husband, mm -hmm. who is now married to my ex-friend, Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, did not see Story that there. No, neither did I. <laughs> neither did I. I did what a number of women do, which mm. is, hey, I'm busy. Hey, you're busy. Mm. Hey, I'll make dinner. Hey, you take care of the money because you're the guy. Yep. And when it came time to divorce, I was left with the, how much do we have? No, how much do we really have? Uh -huh. And I was an investment banker, so right. it was a mistake. And so 90% of women manage their money on their own at some point in their mm -hmm. lives. Uh, for some women, that occurs in a, in a divorce they didn't expect or after a death they didn't expect. And mm -hmm. I can't, and I know it's not going to happen to me because we're so in love yeah. and Sam's so healthy and everything's going to be fine. Yeah. Mark my words. You know, it's going to happen to you unless you're part of that 10%. Mm -hmm. um, and women today, by not being involved with their money, mm -hmm. um, are not leaving thousands of dollars on the table. By mm -hmm. not investing, they're leaving tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, some of your viewers, millions of dollars on the table mm -hmm. because they're putting the money in the bank, they're letting the spouse or partner take care of it, mm -hmm. and they are giving up enormous amounts for some of them. I don't want to overpromise. Markets go up and down, sure. but historically have given up enormous amounts of money. Do you know I was in an elevator last night, <laughs> and a woman was in there with me, and she she had some mail, and she said, "Oh, look, this is about investing. Like, why would I invest?" And I went, <gasps> "Did she know who she was talking to?" No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, I, <gasps> and she got out of the elevator before I could reply, and I turned to the guy who was in the elevator with me, and I said only because she wants to change her life All right. and only because you know we as women will not be fully equal with men until we are financially equal with men mm -hmm. only because by not investing historically we and thinking we were safe we've mm -hmm. given up hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars mm -hmm. over the, mm -hmm. just those little reasons yep. so it is clear um, i spent my career on wall street it is clear to me now that I'm out of that environment that, duh, Sally, it's by men for men. Mm -hmm. That is an industry in which the financial advisors are 85 to 87 percent men. I met with a, a firm recently who told me they had more advisors over the age of 80 than under the age of 30. So these are not wow. <laughs> more youthful men, but more <laughs> mature yep. men. Yes. Um, the industry is full of war analogies, sports analogies, so beat true. the market, outperform. 
Investing TV is ESPN, and the symbol of the industry is a bull. 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 What is bull? bull. What is that? What? What's what? a bull? What? Yeah. That's a phallic symbol. I, I don't oh. think I played baseball a day in my, my life. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And the one down on Wall Street is actually anatomically correct. We did hundreds and hundreds of hours of research with women, women like you. Yes. Um, and ask them, what would you look for in investing? Right. And what we've built at Elevest is something completely different. And we put together an experience that's not, do you want to buy a large cap value mutual fund? Right. Or do you prefer a small cap growth ETF? Mm -hmm. Or how about a managed future? Mm -hmm. But what do you want to do in life? Start a business, retire well, have a family, buy a home, travel around the world? We then calculate the cost for you. You make the trade-offs. Right. Well, I'll retire later because I want the house sooner. And then we put together fully uh, customized mm -hmm. investment portfolios whose goal is to get you not to outperform the S&P right. or do well when the euro you know, increases versus the yen, mm -hmm. but that are targeted to get you to your goals or better in 70% of markets. Totally different but the way women have told us they think about investing. Mm -hmm. So things that we take into account at Elevest, women live longer, and the fact that our salaries tend to peak sooner, um, and the fact that we tend to approach risk differently. We wanna yeah. know not what standard deviation is, but what our downside is. We take those into account. Then we give the woman the opportunity to go, mm -hmm. right? If we have these layers of conservatism and we're letting you know if you're on off track, now right. go. Right. Go start that business because we've helped you get there. Mm -hmm. Go ask for that raise, go ask for that overseas assignment. Because right. here's, here's the thing I like to say, no one says it, which is the best career advice women are not getting right. is to invest. Because think about it, do you feel better starting a business, going up against your boss, leaving, t taking that job and shoving it, leaving that bad relationship if you've got more coin in the bank or less, right? right? Mm -hmm. Because we tend to think of women as risk averse. The very fact that we live longer mm -hmm. means that we can use our longevity and take on a bit more investing risk than the gentlemen do. So the way at LFS we approach it is risk is, are you gonna reach your goal or not? Right. Are you on or off track? Right. What we're really trying to do is to make women aware that there is a gender investing gap. Mm -hmm. It's costing them a fortune. And investing is not something that's not for us. Investing is for us. And investing is a means to financial security and to achieving what you want to in life in a certain attitude, right. which is we're in control, yeah. right? And this is a means to um, equality, financial freedom, and living these, these fantastic lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. The industry for so long has been trying to, you, you know, either you pick the product right. or you have to be with some more mature dude, right. you know, on the other side of a fake mahogany desk yeah. to get you there. This is a much more modern, sophisticated, fast, intuitive, kick-ass approach. If you could have drinks with any woman, who would it be? Gloria Steinem. Oh, that was easy. Success is? Success is having an impact, making a difference. Happiness is? My cat. <laughs> the end of the day, she comes running to the door. That is happiness. That is happiness. I am a woman. <laughs> I love it, I love it. What I love is how the internet has made loving cats, you know, liking cats, yeah. just so much more acceptable. Yes, totally. It's amazing. That's all you see on Instagram. Amazing. Cats, cats and cats and cats. Love it. Um, what is overrated? Having it all. What is underrated? Having fun at work. Uh, what is your leadership style? Collaborative, engaged, um, a little manic, hmm. a little manic, um, passionate. Um, I try to pull from everybody, even the introverts. Um, I try to, quote, add value where I have experience and knowledge, and I try to allow people to really run, particularly when they're areas that I know I don't know, yeah. and let them go. go but ahead. it's great people, let them run, but not the stand back. Yes. Um, because we all bring something to the party. Yeah, I love that. Um, what's a secret management technique that you can impart? Quiet. Hmm. Just keep quiet? I think so. No, I mean, as you're trying to pull things from people, um, I think sometimes in a one-on-one, -on -one, silence is underrated and that you'll get an answer that will be a couple of sentences. And if you sit and wait, the person will then go deeper and you'll hear more and you'll learn more. 
And you can really get to the crux of some important issues if you don't allow the conversation to stop after the headline.